Good morning. I would like uh, to thank the organizers for inviting me to talk about molecules in space. And uh, talking about uh, molecules, uh, I have to say that molecules are tracers of the physical conditions in the interstellar circumstellar medium and in galaxies. Uh, my talk will focus on molecular clouds, prestellar cores, and low and high mass star forming regions. At the end, I will talk about photodissociation regions, just to show you what are the chemical uh, reactions and the chemical processes producing the molecule that we observe. But uh, molecular astrophysics or radioastronomy or astrochemistry uh, address all these fields. And uh, there are several talks in the conference by Thomas Henning, Sun Kwok, uh, Ideko Nomura, and Alopet that uh, address different aspects of the molecules in space. Then uh, the first thing that uh, we need to know for people that are now working directly in the field of uh, interstellar space is that uh, uh, the interstellar clouds show very different shapes with very different physical conditions. That means different temperature, different densities, and different uh, uh, radiation fields. Depending on the density of the clouds, we can have uh, diffuse clouds that are submitted to the UV light from the, all the stars of the galaxy. This uh, UV field will be attenuated in clouds like that in which you have a lot of dust grains inside that attenuate the field and then that change the chemistry. And if you make a zoom, you can see that uh, the densities change a lot. Uh, just to talk about uh, the physical conditions and to compare with the chemistry on the Earth, you have here the physical conditions on the Earth. The density per cube centimeter is 10 to the 19 particles with a, an ambient temperature of 300 Kelvin. And the clouds that uh, we are talking about have densities between 50 particles with temperatures, in the case of diffuse clouds, of 80 Kelvin. In the case of molecular clouds, the density can be higher, 300 particles per cube centimeter. And when you penetrate in the cloud, the densities reach a few 10 to the 3, 10 to the 4. And when the gravitational collapse produces a star, in these regions you can have densities of 10 to the 6 particles. The temperature is always very low, except in a hot core, where the temperature can be as high as 300 Kelvin. Then you can, uh, of course, consider that the chemistry that we have in space is completely different from the chemistry that we are using on the Earth. Typical time scales are between 13 and 14 orders of magnitude slower in space than on the Earth. Typical time to reach the equilibrium in a molecular cloud is one million years, compared with the speed of reactions on the Earth that are microseconds. Then, this is the list that, uh, of molecules that we have detected in space, something like 200 species. Most of them diatomics, but we have also molecules with uh, 12 atoms, like benzene, uh, ethyl, methyl ether, and uh, sun species. We have a few cations, around 11 molecules are ionized positively, and also anions. And the chemistry, all the chemistry in our clouds is based on uh, reaction between ions and neutrals. This is what astronomers call complex organic molecules. You can see that uh, well, it's complex. Uh, for people doing chemistry on the Earth, this is practically something trivial, practically, no? Methyl formate, glycoaldehyde, ethanol, dimethyl ether, and, and the biggest one is, uh, uh, with 12 atoms, I said, is benzene, and also ethyl, methyl ether, and uh, two or three more species. Then, another aspect that is important, the most abundant molecule in the interstellar cloud is molecular hydrogen, followed by carbon monoxide. But carbon, carbon monoxide is four order of magnitude less abundant than molecular hydrogen. And all the other species, what we call abundant species, are eight orders of magnitude less abundant than molecular hydrogen. And most of the molecules that we detect, or the 200, have abundance around 10 to the minus 10, 10 to the minus 11. 
That means very low abundances for this complex molecule, except in hot cores where the abundances of this species can reach 10 to the minus 9. Why is it so interesting for us to study this uh, low abundance molecule? Is because at some moment in the chemistry, we need to make a discrimination between gas phase and surface chemistry because we have dust grains, and the chemistry on the dust grains on the surface is completely different. We need uh, to determine the abundances of as many molecules as possible in order to understand what is happening in the chemistry. In addition, each molecule brings information on different parts of the cloud. And uh, from, uh, this is one of the, my fields of work, from a spectral point of view, molecular physics, all these molecules, most of these molecules have been detected in space before they were detected on the Earth, in particular the radicals. The radical C4H, C5H, C6H, C7H, C8H were detected in space and characterized in space before they were detected in the laboratories. And uh, as I said, the abundances that we can expect for all these complex molecules is around 10 to the minus 9, 10 to the minus 11, and for a few cases, 10 to the minus 8. Then chemistry, we have gas phase reactions, grain surface chemistry, and grain evaporation when the conditions allow the increase of the temperature of the dust grains. The gas phase is dominating the diffuse interstellar clouds chemistry, dense coal dark clouds, and the surface of protoplanetary disk and the world regions surrounding newly formed uh, high mass stars. The grain surface chemistry dominates between the external layers of uh, dark clouds and the regions where we form stars. And grain evaporation is produced when a new star is formed and then radiation from the star increases the temperature or maybe also in shocks. Uh, gas phase chemistry it is curious, uh, as you know, in a space, as the densities are so low, there are no three body reactions, then the most abundant molecule, molecular hydrogen, cannot be formed in gas phase. This is the gas phase chemistry I start with H2, but H2 itself has to be formed on the surface of the grains. Uh, this is something that is uh, very well known, that the grains are very good catalyzer for the formation of H2. Once we have H2, we ionize H2 with cosmic rays. H2 plus react with H2 to make H3 plus, and H3 plus doesn't react with H2. Then H3 plus is the key molecule for the chemistry in gas phase in interstellar clouds. It's very easy. H3 plus react with oxygen to produce OH plus. OH plus react with H2 to produce H2O plus. H2O plus react with H2 to make H3O plus, and H3O plus doesn't react with H2, and then the molecule can wait for an electron to produce water, OH, and atomic oxygen. This is the way we produce molecules in space. And uh, the key molecule, CO, is formed through the reaction of atomic carbon with H3O plus, producing HCO plus, and the recombination of HCO plus produces CO. Then I am going to start to show you the, what we detect in the diffuse interstellar medium, then the dense molecular clouds, and at the end the hot cores and the photodissociation regions. Diffuse interstellar gas describes the initial physical and chemical conditions for dense cloud formation. This is the first step in the evolution of molecular clouds. And in these gases, Herschel, the Herschel satellite, has shown the presence of OH+, H2O+, H3O+, the molecules that uh, I was showing previously that are formed easily through ion neutral reactions. Also hydrogen fluoride and the hydrides of carbon CH, CH+, plus, and also carbon uh, molecules containing nitrogen, NH, NH2, ammonia, NH+. Plus. All, these, uh, li all these molecules are relatively abundant in the diffuse interstellar clouds. And uh, all the, here you have the complete chemistry from ion neutral reactions with uh, producing the most abundant molecules in uh, diffuse interstellar clouds. 
and you can see that all these species have been detected through observations with uh, one of the instruments that were on board of the Hertz satellite, the IFI uh, Teradyne receiver. But in the diffuse interstellar gas, even if uh, the physical conditions are really very um, limited with uh, uh, densities as low as 50 particles per cube centimeter, we know since one century that we have very large molecules. We don't know exactly what these molecules are. We call them pHs, uh, fuller ends, and things like that. And uh, we know from the optical spectra of uh, stars that uh, are intercepted by diffuse molecular clouds, we have hundreds of assortion bands in the optical corresponding to electronic transitions of species that we don't know yet what they are. Well, there is one case in which it can be possible to identify is the case of C60 plus by the group of Mayer up with, uh, through a very nice experiment in the laboratory. They have identified two of these uh, bands, electronic bands of uh, uh, many molecules as C60 plus. Here you have uh, the signature of uh, a lot of big molecules. How these molecules have been formed in the diffuse interstellar gas, we don't know. Maybe from a top-down process using uh, the surface of the grains, maybe from a bottom-up using chemical, chemical reaction, but it seems unlikely that through gas phase reaction we can form very large molecules in the diffuse interstellar clouds. When we move to dense clouds and prestellar cores, here we are dealing with uh, the coldest objects in the universe, Temperatures are around 10 to 20 Kelvin. Densities at a few 10 to the 3, 10 to the 5. And the chemical evolution time, typically 1 to 2 million years. And what is happening there is really surprising because this is the typical picture of a molecular cloud. We call them dark because in the optical they appear dark. Here you have the emission in several molecules, C18O, you know, one of the isotopes of CO, here N2H+, and here this is the continuum. The continuum is the amount of, ga of the dust that you have, and uh, we saw that the column density of dust and the column density of gas should be correlated, and this is true, of course. But when you use molecules to do that, you see that in the peak of the emission, of the dust, you have a hole in the emission of the molecules. Not always, depends on the molecule. What does mean? That at some moment when the density increases, the collisions of the molecule with the dust grains due to the low temperature produce a sticking, practically of unity, and the molecules condensate on the, on the dust grains. All the molecules that have been produced in the gas phase start to condensate on the dust grains, and they, re they will remain in the dust grains for long until there, there is a source, internal source of energy that increases the temperature and evaporate them. The chemistry is dominated by isothermic reaction, neutral-neutral and ion molecules. Neutral-neutral are rather low. They have a rate that is not very high, except when you, one of the neutral is a radical, then you have a very high rate and can be very effective in producing molecules. We have molecules produced in the, in the grain metals that can return to the gas phase through secondary photons. We have in the UV field from the galaxy cannot penetrate in the clouds, but the cosmic rays penetrate in the cloud, colli produce collision with H2, and in these collisions you have emission of photons. And these photons can be used to produce thermal evaporation or uh, um, <coughs> or evaporation from the absorption of uh, these UV photons. In this case, in, in any case, these, effect, uh, these processes are not very effective, and the abundances of the molecules during many, many years, in fact, in dark clouds, no complex molecules were found. Until recently, because the sensitivity of the radio telescopes and of the receivers have uh, increased a lot. And as I said, the molecule go to the dust grains, and then in the dust grain, there is a very interesting chemistry that uh, is produced by hydrogenation of carbon monoxide. You produce HCO, formaldehyde, methanol, and other species. 
And uh, here you have another example, another cloud in which you see clearly the hole in CO. The CO emission is surrounding the peak of the dust emission. Some of the molecules, however, trace rather well the uh, uh, amount of the, of the column density because not all the molecules will go to the dust grains. And something that is really interesting is that fractionation of the deuterated species is extremely high in the region in which CO condensate on the dust grains. Here you have a view of what is happening. You have the condensation of molecules, and then at some moment you have UV photon, you start to process, and you evaporate the molecules, and during the time between the condensation and the evaporation, maybe one million years, the chemistry on the grains has changed the composition of the, dark, of the, of the molecular cloud. The alteration is produced because at the moment that there is no CO available, available H3 plus can react with HD efficiently. CO is more abundant than HD. Then if you have CO in the dark cloud, the, this reaction will produce HCO plus. But if CO is uh, in, on the dust grains, you can increase continuously the abundance of HD, H2D plus. And in the reaction of H2D plus with other species, you will introduce the deuterium. And deuterium enhancements of uh, ten, uh, sorry, four order of magnitude are normal in molecular clouds. That means that DCO plus over HCO plus has an abundance of 0.1 rather than 10 to the minus five. This is due to these reactions, and this is uh, produced by the fact that the CO is no longer available in these regions because uh, it's on the dust grains, and then we produce a very high enhancement of deuterium in H3+. Then depending on the position of the dark cloud, here we consider that uh, the cloud is here in the center. In the external layer, we have a lot of UV photons processing continuously what is happening on the surface. And then as we penetrate in the high density region, the dust grain accumulate molecules, and on the surface of the dust grains, we uh, produce a very rich chemistry. What kind of molecules can be found in dark clouds? Uh, we have very complex molecules, like uh, this one, propylene. That is, uh, curiously, this molecule was detected when no chemical network for interstellar chemistry was introduced in this species as an important one. And the lines were weak because the molecule is uh, the dipole moment of the molecule is very low, but this is the most abundant molecule with three carbons. And we don't know yet how this molecule is produced. You have uh, isomers, for example, H and CO is a molecule that is very abundant in this kind of clouds, but you have the isomer HCNO, fulminic aside, that is detected in this dark cloud. We don't know yet really very well how it is formed. And then you can see that we have complex organic molecules with very low abundances, like uh, the dimethyl ether, uh, methyl mercantan, uh, the, again dimethyl ether, uh, ketin, uh, uh, formic acid, propinal, acetaldehyde, and uh, methyl formate in this kind of clouds. This is the list of molecules. This is not very long. It's uh, maybe 40, 50 molecules that are observed in the molecular clouds considered as pre-stellar cores before a star has been formed inside. You can see that the, for us, for radio astronomers, some of these molecules are complex. For people doing chemistry in the laboratory, well, they are normal molecules. And what happens when used these dust grains that have been processed during one million years, two million years, are submitted to a very strong uh, radiation field because uh, some high mass stars have been formed inside the cloud. This is a picture of uh, the Orion cloud. This is the central region. You can see the effect of the star formation is uh, perturbating completely the gas in the region around the stars. All the cloud is um, very rich in star formation, but this region is uh, very, very well known for uh, astrophysicians, astrophysicists. This is a region that is very rich in molecules. And also on ISIS. You can see here a typical spectrum of, uh, uh, in the infrared of the dust grains, 
and you see the absorption by water, carbon monoxide, methane, methanol, CO2. This is the, the continuum emission of the dust grains, and over this continuum emission, you see the absorption of the molecules on the surface. Now we hit the dust grains, and what happens is that uh, we will evaporate all this dust grain. You can have a look to this paper by Garrot et al. In, in which they show how the chemistry could change and how important is the release of these molecules to the gas phase, because once in the gas phase, you have now temperatures in the gas that are around 200 Kelvin. And uh, with these temperatures, you can produce war chemistry. Here, you see what you get when you point at a radio telescope to one of these hot cores. Here, this is, uh, the question is not if it is chemical complexity. This is uh, the emission produced at the beginning when I saw that the first time, I said 100 of molecules. In fact, the problem is that when you have a temperature of 200 Kelvin, all the rotational levels of your molecules are populated. As in addition, you have ejected a lot of molecules from the dust grains to the gas phase, you have column densities that have been enhanced. Then all this spectral richness is produced used by 50 molecules. Some of the molecules, like ethyl cyanide, are producing more than 3,000 lines. And of the 15,000 lines that we detected, 8,000 were unknown at the beginning. Right now, today, we have 3,000 U lines that are coming probably from a few species. And some of the molecules that we have detected, methyl acetate, you can see how complex the molecule is, methyl methyl ether, one of the biggest one, with 12 atoms, and methyl isocyanate, that is a very nice molecule because it was detected also with phyllae uh, on Rosetta. And uh, this molecule has uh, also to give an order of magnitude of the four that is behind these detections. We were observing the molecule during five years in the laboratory because the molecule is so floppy that internal rotation and, and uh, rot uh, internal vibration and uh, rotation are coupled and it's a very, uh, the Hamiltonian to describe the molecule is very complex. But it was after five years of what we were able to identify something like 275 lines completely free of assertion. The molecule, again, is one of the most abundant molecules with H, N, C, and O. Unfortunately, uh, we don't know yet how the molecule is produced. Even using grain surface chemistry, we don't know. We can learn a lot by using ALMA, another interferometer, looking to the spatial distribution of the different species that could be related, like methanol or methyl isocyanate, HNCO, and uh, formamide, for example. And what is a surprise is that for each molecule or for each family of molecules, you have a different spatial distribution. Does mean that the chemistry, and in particular time, is playing an important role in the composition of the different molecular clouds. While this is used uh, uh, to compare the abundances in Orion with the abundances that were detected by Filet on the surface, and you can see that in the case of methyl isocyanate, the abundance relative to water in the comet was one. However, in Orion is uh, 50 times less, 0.02. This is another example of complex molecule that has been detected in Sagittarius B2 by Veloz, amino acetonitrile, relatively simple molecule with uh, eight atoms. And uh, glycine is very similar. You replace the CN by the group COOH, and then you have uh, glycine, but glycine has not been detected yet. Another molecule that has been detected that is maybe a prebiotic interest is uh, uh, isopropyl cyanide. It's a branched molecule that was detected also by Veloz et al. And recently, the first chiral molecule, the propylene oxide, this molecule, that has been detected through three transitions toward the galactic center. Then what happens when all this gas is strongly submitted to an radiation from a, a nearby stars? Then uh, we have now photochemistry to add to the problem. And 
we expect to have a region in which practically all the region is uh, atomic and ionized, and a transition region in which we change from uh, atomic hydrogen to molecular hydrogen, a region in which we change from carbon plus to carbon and carbon monoxide. And uh, is, these objects are really very nice because you have uh, a stratification of the chemistry and of the physical condition that allow to get an information about what is happening. For example, here you see the fully ionized region. This is the region in which you have carbon plus, and this is the molecular region. This is an observation by Goiko Chaital that has been published in Nature last uh, summer. And then you see this is ALMA data. You see the structure of the neutral gas. Here you will see the different regions, ionized, pHs, H2, and molecular gas. This is the C+, plus, the molecular hydrogen. This is the transition between atomic and molecular hydrogen. Here you have the emission from large um, poly polycyclic aromatic carbons. And this is the ionization region. Everything from here toward the star is completely ionized. And this is the structure that we could expect. We have the ionization from the star. We have a region in which we have uh, uh, fully ionized. And then here we have production, probably from top-down processes from the dust grain, we produce pHs, and then the transition from atomic to molecular carbon monoxide, a region in which water that is produced here will be in ice form on the different dust grains. You can see that we have a lot of uh, change in the physical condition. And just to finish, to show you that the photochemistry can be really very, very important, we have in space typically a principle that said that the molecule, the most stable molecule, is the one that will be formed. And this is more or less true. And for acid formic aside, there are two conformers, trans and cis. And what happens is that the trans is below the cis by a barrier of uh, several 4,500 uh, wave numbers. That's mean uh, 7,000 Kelvin. There is no energy in the interstellar clouds to go from here to here. However, when you look to the a photodissociation region, the Orion bar, you have the trans here and the cis here, a different position, and you see trans cis, here you have only trans, here you have only trans, and here you have both. That means that photochemistry is changing the structure of the molecules in the gas phase. And this is important because on the Earth, this is something that has been observed on surfaces. On surface, you change from trans to cis, and you change the conformers very easily by irradiation of the surfaces with infrared. Here, the process is produced through absorptions from the electronic ground state to the first electronic excited stage in which the trans and the cis are practically uh, missed. They are no different between both, practically. Then you absorb a photon from here, and then from fluorescence, you can, fl fluorescence, you can go to the trans or to the cis. And this is something that has to be introduced in the chemical codes because as soon as you increase the number of atoms, the number of conformers for the molecules increase, and probably in the uh, region submitted to UV photons, we have this kind of chemical processes that uh, have to be included in the chemical models. And uh, surprisingly, when you ask the, uh, people doing uh, quantum uh, uh, chemistry calculation, they provide us with just the fluorescence processes, and they, with these uh, values, we got a ratio for the trans and cis of 3.5 that was very close to the one that we observe of 3 plus minus 1. Then just to conclude, there is a large number of physical and chemical processes along the evolution of molecular clouds. The largest identified molecule has 11, 12 atoms. There is uh, no reason to think that there are more uh, bigger molecules on the surface, but probably they are, but the abundances will be on the surface of the dust grain. The abundances will be low. The largest molecules are there. You can see that H-C9N, uh, this is a cyanopoline, benzene, ethyl methyl ether, uh, propyl isocyanide, uh, methyl acetate. Only one chiral molecule has been detected so far, propylene oxide. And photochemistry at the edge of the molecular clouds can modify the structure of the molecules. Grain surface chemistry is, of course, necessary to understand what is happening. And these grains are the ones that will make micrometeorites, planetesimals, and planets in other systems. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Yeah.